Okay. So I, I didn't really create an outline because I worked on um, a problem and uh, I just wanted to go over sort of a couple of the key things. So Perfect. yeah, like what are the big themes? Um, obviously graphing and um, you know, how do we sort of deal with this problem of discrete, you know, sort of binary data? Um, I don't know. I, I kind of didn't really get this. So this is like not so binning is a way to deal with the problem. So this is, um, you know, just normal. And then this is binned somehow. Um, I don't necessarily really see the difference that much. I don't know if you felt that or. or seen well, the circles are the, so the, the gray dots in the right hand plot are the original data still. The circles, the open circles, the fitted data is not on here. All it's on here is these binned averages, right? The circle, yeah, right. open circles. So that does, you know, it shows the curve shape. If you just look at, if you only have the, the gray dots, you can't really see as well, perhaps with the bend. I guess that's the only difference. Yeah, I just, I don't know. I just didn't really see the value of it, I guess. But, um, but you know, whatever. Um, talked about this idea of discrimination lines, like how well um, the two X variables are um, discriminating. Um, oh, and then interactions, obviously. So this, yeah, I actually did work on one, like with an interaction. You know, um, I think we've already talked about interactions. Yeah. But interactions are, you know, another way of, saying this is its effect modification. So how much one predictor variable influences the outcome depends on the value of another. Um, so yeah, in this chapter, the, the, the main example is this idea of well switching, which apparently some wells have arsenic in them, and right. which is interesting. Um, I usually try to avoid those, but uh, I don't ever go to wells. So there you go. Um, Actually, I don't know if you had an issue with this, but okay, so we're doing logistic regression. So these are all log odds, right? Or do we know if Stan GLM actually exponentiates these when we print the outcome? Do you know? No, they're, they're log odds. Okay, yeah. right. So I tried to actually exponentiate them and I didn't really get any difference. By the way, I don't know if you can hear this, but there's like... The lawn guys are here today. So no, I don't hear them. Okay, good. Well, it's loud to me, but not to you. Um, so, okay. So, yeah, in this scenario, we're trying to look at whether or not someone switches wells. And, um, you know, uh, in this case, as the authors point out, like the intercept isn't really interpretable because it's when the distance is, I guess, 100 yards or whatever. And then um, how much the arsenic level is and all that stuff. So um, we have to center stuff for it to be sort of interpretable. Um, this whole idea of dividing by four to get the differences, I, I, I've never heard of that before. Um, yeah, we, ta we talked about it last chapter, he introduced that. It's just the idea that's where the slope is. That's the maximum slope of the, of the uh, sigmoid function, right? Right, right, right. Um, Oh yeah, and then so then now, so this is exponentiated, right? So look, when we have the, the inverse of the logic, we get, you know. Um, right. So this is the the 47% of switching is if the distance the nearest safe well is zero and the right. uh, are, so yeah, that's that seems fairly, um, well, probable. Uh, so yeah, they talk about this sort of imperfect standardization where you're not dividing by the standard deviation, but you are subtracting the mean value so that now the constant, if we were, if this was the constant, let's just imagine it was after we mean centered, that would be if, um, well, actually, wait, hold on. Um, so you can't center the distance uh, um, to a hundred meters or whatever, right? Or, or um, wait a minute. So, yeah, the uh, average is 0.48, but he doesn't actually center. He just like, like recomputes the. So yeah, so I guess maybe I'm wrong, but so this 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 distance 100 does that mean just how far the distance is in like meters or something like that? Oh, I, well, I know why because he divided, divided by 100. Yeah. Right. Okay. So now, if this was, let's say, this was, if we if we had mean centered both of those, that would mean that, you know, if 
the distance to the well was average and the amount of arsenic in the is is current well is is av the average for the sample then the, the the probability of switching is 47 percent does that make is that right well no the 47 is this estimated for zero but he does show what the value would be for standard that's down to below right that 59 percent where he adds in so he, he adds in the uh, he uses the model to compute the centered intercept. oh right well no i was just and i was just uh, sorry i was i should say the prediction prediction at the centered values right right so okay so when but if you had centered and then whatever that number would be would be the centered yeah. intercept but we didn't center them so okay um but that's what you meant yeah yeah so anyway the, the whole idea of you know centering is we're just subtracting the mean um we have um you know um we have these things centered now so yeah this is Right now we centered them. Yeah, we have. Yeah. Now everything's easier because he centered them. You have to do all the math. Everything right? is easier, indeed. <laughs> um, yeah. So less mucking around. Yeah. So okay. So then statistical significance. Um, so this idea of being, you know, two standard deviations from zero. Um, oh, you know, to be honest with you, I I I did this. Um, in my example, where I ran the the Lou um, score and then compared the two, but um, so this is leave one out, sort of like we're, we're running a bunch of uh, yeah. iterations and then seeing how well the fit with and without the ride. So I did something like that. I I think. Okay. Um, I did not use this stuff. I just used them. I don't know if you remember, but I used um, plot the plot underscore model function from the sj plot package right i, for, I did forget about that yeah <laughs> that's cool yeah um let me see oh yeah and then um you know i didn't really work on this stuff i guess uh, i don't know this idea of I, average predictive comparisons on a probability scale i've never really dealt with that um so i i started working through it but i ran out of time um but so, okay, so we have, in this case, we're, we're talking about the switching thing again. So if we were to compare two households, one where the, the distance is, um, I'm assuming 100 meters versus not 100 meters or whatever. Um, so yeah, so if we, 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 do, we do all the math and then we get uh, negative 0.21 implies on <laughs> average households that are 100 meters from the, um, the, 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 the safest well or 21 percent li less likely to switch yeah i guess that's helpful i don't know um yeah so um yeah that that, that, that kind of took us to the end i also i was going to do a residual plot but um okay let me do this let me share my session okay let me do mine for i'm doing i'm doing three um 13 or a 14, uh, four. Okay. Um, so hopefully, okay. So oh, what I did was, um, couldn't really find any good examples. So I'm using what's called the Framingham study. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's a study of like heart disease. It's pretty yes. famous. I have heard of it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, um, I've heard it mentioned in like yeah, so we've got the main outcome is like 10 year, you know, 10 year predictive, like cardiovascular health, you know, card cardiovascular um, heart disease as an outcome, right? And so you can see you've got whether they're male, age, education, which I didn't mess with because it was categorical, whether or not they're current smoker, SIGs per day, whether they're taking BP meds. Couldn't really figure out what this is about. So prevalence, like, Maybe this is like if they're, if they're if they're like have a risk factor for stroke or hypertension. I guess I don't know, but anyway, you get the point. Um, so yep. I, I just picked. I mean, we can. And I'm certainly open to do anything else, but I just picked a gender, age, current smoker, and total cholesterol. Okay. Picks, yeah. Um, so okay. So this is the part that i'm a little confused by right so i'm just using like the print function by the way this is a nice like object you know speaking of advanced r right this print function obviously is 
um, specific to this type of model, right? Every right, yeah. print function has like, you know, specifics related to- Yeah, S3 method, right? Yeah, okay. So I, I don't know if you've used the broom package before. Uh, well, I did have used it. I forgot about it though. I haven't used it for yeah. a while. So I must be doing something wrong or something. I don't know, but like I, I said, exponentiate equals true. So it should give us, the, you know, no more, no more of the log odds, but that's not what I'm getting. Well, the, the, you're, well, let's see if you exponentiate, then you just get the odds. You're still not getting the probability. You're only getting no, the odds. I mean, so you need to divide by one minus whatever's there to get a true probability. Well, I mean, typically this is in most logistic regression, this is uh, sufficient, but so I don't know. Well, it depends what, how big the probability is, right? But I don't know. Mm -hmm. Well, anyway, um, so, yes. Yeah, so, so then I tried the centering thing. So I'm not, yeah. So I, I centered the total cholesterol and the age, and yeah, obviously this changed, you know, the intercept, but it's not changing. Um, well, it's it's it's. Um, it's not changing any of the other predictors, right? And then same thing here. I don't know what I, I did wrong, but I did, this is this is now that. So, um, so obviously men are more likely to have cardiovascular disease. I, I'm assuming with, you know, um, once again, we need, to, we need to exponentiate this, but, um, yeah, so have being as we get older, you know, the, the risk becomes, you know, stronger. And then current being a current smoker was, you know, also a large effect. Interestingly, the effects of being male are stronger than huh. being a current smoker. And then this was sort of puzzling to me. The total cholesterol. I mean, I guess cholesterol is getting kind of like reevaluated in the, the literature, but um, this is not a very robust effect. And these are standard. Except for male, obviously, the smoker. Right. So, this, yeah. so what does this say? This says that if you're an average age, average cholesterol, whatever that is, then mm -hmm. and not a smoker, but you're male, you have fifty three percent higher chance. Is that what that's saying? I don't. Well, this is an exponent. So this is this is still log odds. I'm assuming. Oh, you did exponential. No, you said exponential. True. I know, but that's what I'm saying. Is like it's still. It, I don't know. Oh, it's the same. Yeah, it's the Are... same. That's what I'm saying. So. What's going Anything? on with exponentiate? <laughs> I don't know. Maybe there's, I, I didn't have a chance to fix it, but um, so I guess. Okay, so we got to well, do like so the, let's, let's do this. Let's do this. Let's just logic, say, inverse logic of that or something. Um, right. So it's that divide. So that's the odds. Right. So you got to do. So basically what we're saying here is if you're male, if you're male, there's a 60%, a 60, 70% increase in the likelihood of you getting cardiovascular disease. That's what 1.69 means. That's 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 the odds. And that's what we want, right? Um, that's it, just approximately, right? I mean, it's really 60. Yeah. So the inverse logic is not the same quite as the exponentiation, but. Oh, is that what the, is that what this is? Maybe I'm doing so. This isn't this isn't the log well, odds. for small for small probability, this fine. It's close, right? Mm, I don't know. Yeah, because it's the log odds. So actually, you just get the odds, <laughs> right? right? Obviously, one point seven is not a probability, but you subtracted one, and you got pretty close to the right answer, right? So that guess, right. Um, why is that? I got to think for a minute. Hard to think. Hard to think. In I know public. the feeling. Yeah. In public. <laughs> um, yeah. So um, I'm just kind of doing these by hand just as a way to kind of look at them. So, okay. So if you're a smoker, you have a 40% increase in the, um, in, in um, having cardiovascular disease. Yes. Yeah. So anyway. Um, oh yeah. And so then I did this. So <clears throat> this is okay, but I forgot how to interpret this. So I don't. I for, um, so th this is this is a probability. That's the oh that I don't I forget I, I only one I only one I ever look at is the first one ELPD, yes estimated log probability density because I don't. Remember mm -hmm. how the other two work. <laughs> That's okay. It's in, it's in that chapter, but I keep forgetting. 
So now I did. <laughs> now I did this. I did. I did an interaction between age and total cholesterol. Okay. I don't know. I mean, not the not the not the greatest idea, I guess, because it just looks like this. And then, yeah, you I, put I just, more digits on it, you can see. But yeah, yeah. So it's like, does. Okay, still. Yeah. So, so what's the interaction? It's um. Uh -oh. Yeah. So. Okay. So the, yeah, that's okay. So basically, it's like almost one, which is. Yeah, right. typical. Oh yeah, and then so now I took the interaction. This was between fifty. We see the fifty-fifty chance, right? Because that's the that? odds. Right. One means right. it's you know. I mean, that's not quite right. For each level of effect, whatever that is, be a, a, you know. No wait, that's not right. Either. It has basically no effect. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So this, by the way, this is. Um, I didn't do this intentionally. This is um, what the plot model thing did. So this is, it took cholesterol and it just created three sort of groupings, like one of like, sure. so this, remember this is centered. So zero is the mean level right. of cholesterol. So this, I'm assuming this is like really low and this is like really high. So what's interesting is, like, okay, so the people with really low cholesterol have, um, let me see, like, um, lower probabilities but then it, it crosses at some point at, at around like 15 it looks like and then it becomes people with low cholesterol that just seems weird to me become higher probability um i, I couldn't really make heads or tails of that to be honest with you but um one of the things we could actually do maybe i'm trying to find something a little bit more like robust maybe like maybe if there's like um Current, being a current smoker and having cholesterol and it, oh, what happens here? Oh, what did happen? That's weird. I, I, I did this up top. Okay. Yeah. How oh, does the H disappear? Hmm. Okay. Hopefully that that works. Anyway, yeah, I um, I like plotting. I like I like I think graphs are really important for this type of stuff. Yeah, this takes a while. Sorry. Um, refresh. Wait, so let's let's yeah. talk about this for a minute because, like, when it's really small like that, we know that it has almost no effect on the uh, on the mm -hmm. log odds, and therefore has almost no effect on the probability. But you gotta be careful not just to go ahead and exponentiate that and try to interpret it right in that case because. Why not? Is it? Cause what does it mean? I'm trying to understand what I'm trying to think what it means. It's supposed that the coefficient was zero, right? Mm -hmm. For something. Okay. Right. I don't care what it was, right? So you're saying right. so like so basically when you when you exponentiate log odds, you get the odds. And then basically what it means is if it's one, then it means okay. it's just sort of flat, right? But if it's less than one or greater okay. than one, okay. I got the, you. the excess exactly. amount is like the added, you know, sort of. Probably now I got you. Now yeah. Got you. Sorry, it's like biostat. Like it's just, it's just like thinking about wait, odds are one. That means it's a 50 50 chance. Wait, what does that even mean? No, wait, that's not the right. It's contribute contributing to the odds. Right. So yeah, this is interesting. That's why I find it easier to think about contributing to the log odds and then later figure out the actual probability in a particular case. But yeah, I don't know. I just I don't know. My I, I, I sometimes I just have trouble with it. Yeah. Which is why this chapter is here, I guess, because right. everybody has trouble with it. Right. All um, right. So this is saying. Yeah. So this is now people. Oh, oh, you know, crap. I just realized it's, it's not a, that's not, not properly good. a okay. category. Yeah. We don't want that. So actually, dang it. Um, and I forgot how to do. Oh, man. Yeah. We want this. And well, all right. you want to go the other way around, right? Yeah, and all of a sudden, I don't know. Uh, man, hold on. Let me do this real quick. Um, I think there's a way for me to do this. I wonder why I chose that direction. It just, I think it just makes, you know, kind of choices. Um, 
based on is smoker a factor or is it just an integer no it's it's a, it's a one it's an indicator variable so okay I think if I put these in a certain order it should work but let's see if not I'll just we'll can it but thinking about it yeah hey, that's the same thing still the, the same one. damn thing the other one. <laughs> that's what I was going to try to Almost do fails. <laughs> yeah this is a great package by the way the guy who who made this up I forget what his name is in, in Germany I think or Austrian or something he's um it's a tremendous uh, utility. It's really good. Okay. Yeah, there we go. Whoa, look at how weird. Um, yeah, like the, the obviously it's oh it's 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 you know as as cholesterol gets higher. I mean, I, I didn't even look at the what the raw numbers are. Oh, it's interesting the uncertainty gets so high when that cholesterol gets higher. Yeah. Well, it makes sense. You're just probably not having a bunch of people out there. Oh, know? right. That's Those true. people dead. are not with us. They're anymore. dead. <laughs> they didn't make it to the study. <laughs> yeah. So, um, but smoker is not that big of a predictor. I'm going to start smoking. Give me a right. cigarette. No. Yeah. No, it's it's for for younger people. It certainly is, though. Yeah. Yeah. So, by the way, one thing I do. What like... was the mean age? Oh, what was, I'm sorry. But that's not that's not age. It's cholesterol. What was the mean cholesterol? Oh, that's a good question. Let's see. Um, Not for young. I was thinking the wrong thing. Mean. Oh. Well, what's the dollar size? That's something new. I don't know. <laughs> oh, yeah, I know. Sorry. I mean, not dollars. What's the number size? Oh, shit. There's Nas and A's in there. We're going to get some. Uh... It's pretty damn high. Yeah, that's pretty damn high. Yeah. So if you have a if you have a mean cholesterol, smoking is clearly significant then, right? But yeah. If you're, if you're already really high, then you does well, go ahead and smoke your 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 days are numbered. <laughs> yeah. I guess. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. But anyway, I mean that's pretty that's pretty cool. Look at that. Yeah. I guess I, I got to, um, oh, I like how it says um, this, by the way, this is from the package. It says it's been printified um, to get smooth plots. I don't know what that means, but uh, anyway. I'm going to try your uh, uh, 14. Um, yeah. Three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's get that going here. Just got to find Zoom and all these things. Oops. Share. That's not it. That's not it. That's it. You see it now? Yep. Okay. Q. Um, so this is 14.3. I'm doing my usual mixture of tidy and uh, sure. not so tidy because I'm still not really comfortable with these things. This is the Wells data. We're back to the Wells data. The whole the, here's what the problem asks us to do: uh, take a look at the Wells data, but now we're going to use the log transformation, right? The log of a distance to see if that makes much of a difference. I guess. Right. Uh, in the in the in the text, I think I remember them saying that they that didn't really make much of a difference, but <laughs> we're yeah. going to do it. So load in that data. I guess I already did. Um, but, so by the way, when it says log, that, that, that's that's the nat it's the natural log, right? I just, I'm... Sorry, that's a good question. I think so because I remember reading yeah. that. Yeah, natural log. So, yeah, no, it is natural log because that everything works nicer when it's a natural log. Derivatives work out nicer and everything. So the um, so here's all the different variables in there, and kind of like you did, I just kind of pick. Well, he told us no. I'm sorry, they instructed us to look at just the probability of switching versus log distance. Uh, so I just set up the standard uh, stand GLM here, and I come out with this. So this says that, um, what does this say? Uh, who knows? Um, I forgot. I haven't thought about this for a while. So this is the coefficient on the log of the distance. Right? That's, the that's the log odds of the log distance. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. That's so what is that? Brutal. So I didn't actually think about interpreting that. I did question whether I should center things or not, but I didn't, I didn't really... Um, uh, try to think about what that could mean. Well, I mean, 
what could it mean? So this is a very simple linear thing, right? So all we got to do is we just say, okay, what is your log distance? And I'll multiply it by minus 0.02 and I get the log odds and I can convert that to a probability, right? So, mm -hmm. but the interpretation is fairly straightforward, but just like saying it in words, like what is 100 or is log, oh, what is one um, in the log scale give you? One in the log scale of distance gives you minus 0.2 log odds, right? Mm -hmm. Which is not very helpful, but I just said it anyway. Yeah. But hey, we'll plot it. That'll make, that'll make things Yeah, exactly. Better. And the plotting, it's always about plotting. <laughs> I think that's. Uh, so this. This big mess here, I borrowed directly from the Tidy Ross example. This yeah. is changing it to be the log instead. Yeah. Um, I just copied what they had there. There's a lot of stuff that I wouldn't be able to reproduce on a, uh, you know, without being yeah, able to no. Google it, but it's there. They, they, seem, they seem allergic to using ggplot in um, the book. I mean, I guess that's what the uh, the Tidyverse version is for, obviously. But Right. The, the, the book uses base R for everything, mm -hmm. but the Tidy Ross version uses the uh, GG plot. So he produces these kind of violin plots um, mm -hmm. in the Tidy Ross example. So this is the probability of the household switching versus the distance. But now you can see it's got this kind of exponential decay because we used a log of the distance when we did the fit, right? Mm -hmm. And if you look at these violin plots, I don't know if you, can, I don't really see, I can't get anything out of that. I mean. Which just basically means that uh, that's for, um, wait a minute. No, it's, it's a, the violin plot shows the density, like how many people uh, switch, but like you have to compare these, like how many are in this, and I mean that compared to what the probability is here. So the, the ones on top are the people that did switch, Yeah, right? the switchers, yeah. Okay, so basically for both, they're both um, left, um, you know, skewed, I guess you're saying, because you're saying, people well, are... What I'm trying to say is I can't tell whether this fit really matches the data very well from this, right? Mm. That's why I decided, hey, let's try this bin data thing that, you know, that uh, they're talking about, right? So I just did a bin, I binned it into, uh, in the, bin the log distance. I computed the log distance up above, I didn't mention that. I just did that. I didn't use it in the fit, but I just computed it just so I could see what the range was, right? So I bin the log distance. And then produce a plot like this. So this is now log distance versus the probability of switching. And the red line is my fit, which is now uh, more of a straight line because we're well outside the right, the sigmoid is kind of flat in this region. Right. And now we can see the bin data. Well, for the smaller distance of zero, of very small distances, there wasn't very much data. So you know, the one person that was very close for some reason switched, and one person that was like uh, hundred meters away, I guess, close to that, you know didn't switch <laughs> and then we got more points for the, the bigger bins. And so, yeah, the fit's not terrible, but it's not great either for, for using the long distance. I don't know what, it, I didn't do the, the case of the book did where they just did the, I should have done that. I think now I think about to see how much the linear model might've fit better, but. Okay. Does that make sense? Anything that I'm talking about here? The point of doing the binning is so that I can compare the data, right? Mm -hmm. To the fit. So the data is the points with the error bars. The error bars just represent the standard deviation uh, for those bins, how many points are in that bin, right? And the, the midpoint is just the mean of that bin. Actually, it's right here where it's computed, or the median, I should say. A median distance, and I use median distance because we're using log distance. So if you're doing the log, it's probably, it's more stable to use the median. Yeah, I guess. Was my thought, just because like the, you know, the log of the mean, or like an exponential distance for log normal anyway is the median, right? Mm -hmm. So anyway, that was my, my attempt at fitting that. Um, part C says make a residual plot and bin, bin residual plots. So that's you know something like the difference between these points in the line. Um, again, I borrowed the plot, the data that they had in the Tidy Ross examples. Um, oh, I didn't have value. I'm like, where's the plot? <laughs> Okay, that just calculates the things, the bin means. And this produces the plot. And that's what it looks like. I mean, it's the same kind of plot they produce in the book where the, the dots are the, the, uh, the bin residuals, right? Yeah. And I guess there's a lot more bins here than I was using, but 
Um, you basically want everything to come between the lines. And yeah, the lines are the two points. standard deviation lines. We got, we got six yeah. points that are you know, less They're than not. Less than. Yeah. Yeah, there's six outliers there. It just seems excessive, but it's not the end of the world, but yeah. it's not. How do they have that with so many points, though? I haven't looked at this for over a week, so I apologize. <laughs> it's my bad. <laughs> but no. So using cut number and bins equals 40. I'm surprised you can have 40 bins. There's not that much data. Just curious. Cut number does um does it by word tiles, right? No, which one? Which one does which? I always forget. Hmm. Equal number, yeah. Cut number. So I use cut interval up here because I wanted to have like you know even intervals. There they're doing cut number. Okay. Yeah. So these are these are chosen to. That's why there's so many down here because there's more data in this middle range. There's hardly any data out here, so the yeah. bins are wider. The bins are wider out here, uh, necessarily, right? Because they're the bins are based on equal numbers. All right. So the the, the x-axis is. Um, can you go back? Sorry. Can you go back down to that real quick? The the bin the bin the the the, the figure. Sorry. I just want to try something with oh, sure. bins for the fun of it. Yeah, it doesn't really make that much difference. So basically, um, if for the, the high residuals above, you know, like so the, the above, um, it's all kind of in a narrow range of distance, but the actual, the lower um, residuals are pretty widely apart. Yeah. Again, it's because there's just more data down here. These are these are wide bands. There's only, you know, mm -hmm. a few points with a large distance. Yeah. I should have just make them put that back to 40. I guess that worked better. Oops. We're using, uh, <laughs> Python where you do shift enter. That's why I keep, Doing that mm -hmm. shift, shift enter doesn't work in the first video. Okay. Anyway, that's that. So let's see. The last one is to compare uh, the error rate to the null model. So the null model is where uh, we just ignore everything, and the probability switching is just the average probability that you switch that everybody switched, right? Mm -hmm. uh, which is you know fifty seven percent, right? So the error rate, if we just use that as our um, model right mm -hmm. then the error rate would be about that one minus that or 42 and a half percent 43 percent we'd be mm -hmm. wrong about 43 percent of the time okay um, based so on chance the, alone right it's yeah. based on the null model right so if we predict um if we use the fitted model we can fit right take our data um take our data and ask what the you know when was it correct and when was it wrong right that's all that does right there right and it's, it's got a 58 percent chance um of of, of an error rate 58 percent no sorry 58 percent chance being right so the error rate for that is one minus s like not that much improvement or any at all right it's, it's like <laughs> fractional difference yeah slightly better than the null model right Wait, is that right? I'm having trouble thinking about this again. So if we fit, so I'm trying to think about this again. So if we do the null model. That means you give me a guy, I'm gonna say, I'm just gonna guess, I'm gonna roll the uh, dice. And if if I get, I roll percentile dice or whatever, and if I get 58 or less, I'm gonna say he did switch. Um, And so you're, I'm going to be wrong about that 42% of the time, right? No. Yeah. Right. Yeah.
it's not not the, not not our greatest effort. But then there's only, there's not that much data in the actual. Uh, there's not that much information. Yeah. In model. It's just like distance, right? And yeah. Yeah. Log distance is all we're using. Yeah. Log distance. Sorry. So what are we um sorry i was looking at i'm looking ahead to next week um so. oh, i'm just trying to think about this so is this the error rate or is this the 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 percentage time that i'm correct i mean if i just guess then i'm going to be i can do better than this right mm -hmm. ah shoot i can't think i can't remember how this they work this out now mm -hmm. all right i'll just leave it as leave it aside for now think about it later because my brain yeah. is I didn't get enough sleep last night or something. I don't know what it is. Another feeling. <laughs> I'll make a note about it. That's how I felt last week. So anyway, I'm not doing much. It doesn't look like I'm doing much better than just guessing, though. But this yeah. Is, that's the point, which is not too hard to believe when you look at this, right? <laughs> nope. <laughs> All right. So... The next thing they wanted us to do, one last thing here, was to look at um, instead of using distance directly, we'll just create an indicator variable um, with three possibilities. Either the distance is less than 100 meters, it's between 100 and 200 meters, and it's greater than 200 meters, right? Mm -hmm. so, so we're going to create a new variable, um, which I call distance cut, right? Mm -hmm. And I'm going to fit that to the distance cut. I, oh, I subtracted one just to get rid of the... Uh, the intercept since I don't want since that way I can have the three categories and not have to you mm -hmm. have the baseline be different, right? So these are the the coefficients. Then um, if you're in the if you're in the the log odds are um, that you would switch are increased if you're in the lowest range. Does that make any sense? No. Mm -hmm. That seems wrong now that I read it. I guess here's my question. So this is now these are now like dummy indicators. Is there any, yeah dummy indicators, right? There's there's is there anything after so like um are we is there like another is there anything after the, the highest one? Because don't we need to like have a reference category? No, there is nothing after the highest one. So if there's no reference, what what is the significance then? Or I mean, sorry. What is? I guess it doesn't matter because we're not. Sorry, there is no significance. There's. I mean, I'm saying like, how do we interpret it? Like, so the distance cut between zero and hundred is median is 0.374. I don't know what that means. Well, it means simply that the probability of switching, if you're in that bin, is um, the log odds is point the in, the inverse logit of that, right? So you're fifty nine percent chance of switching if you're that close, but why are you less likely to switch if you're in the second bit? I don't get that at all. Something wrong here. Forty two percent chance, and if you're in the far bend, it's really unlikely you'll switch. That seems totally opposite of what we saw before, right? Right. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I maybe I did something screwy here. Maybe this uh, is the wrong way to do this with the, I thought if I took off the intercept, um, that this would make easier sense. Oops. Stupid thing. Uh, yeah, I'm not familiar with this inverse logit thing. Um, transforms a real number to, okay, so it turns it into a probability. Right, directly into a probability, yeah. Okay, because when I do, um, was it uh, point three? Um, so it's the same. So I just took off the intercept and it just says the same thing. Now the baseline is a zero to one hundred. Oh, which is what? Which is what the? Okay, yeah. So by the way, uh, when you do um, exponent, when you exponentiate that, you get one um, point three uh, seven four is uh, one point four five. So basically, we're saying being between zero and a hundred or whatever 
is related to a 45 percent increase percent increase in chance in switching i guess um but that's related to odds but when it was the inverse it was um so if I put the minus one, you're all those subtract out the point three four for me. That's one reason why I did that. So I, I thought there's mm -hmm. a reason. I can't remember. So these should be point three four less. That's all. Yeah. Okay. Or more. You know what I mean? Okay. But so I don't understand why my fit is showing that it's, you're more. You're less likely. That well, makes sense, right? Further so the, away. What? The further away, right? Which means they're not going to want to do it, right? That's oh, it's, no, I'm sorry. You're right. That is what this shows. Wow. See, I'm telling you, man. I just like, you know, I, my brain so is like of off today. It is completely turned off. I don't know what's you, wrong. It's sometimes like you, sometimes like, you know, you're so into like whatever the, the, the details of the model, you're not even thinking about what the data means anymore, you know? But I was trying to think about it. I'm like, wait a minute, what's going on here? But yeah, no, right. Further away means you're, Less likely to switch because it's too hard to get there. Duh, okay, okay, everything makes sense. Yeah. Wow, I was just having a heck of a time with that. I know. Sometimes I have the same thing where, like, I'll, I'll break <laughs> rack my brain and then I'll go, dude, wait a minute. It's only because there's no, it's, it's, you're not thinking about this right. All right. Anyway, so, so everything makes sense again. And then we find out that uh, we can compare that to the bin data. We can bin the data in exactly the same way, right? And mm -hmm. compute the, Compute the mean and standard deviation. And of course, the means are smack dab on to the, the fit, the fancy fit that I did, because the fit is really just taking the average when you think about what it's doing, right? Yeah. When fitting, remember, when I'm fitting to a constant, I'm just taking the average. So if I'm fitting to three different levels, I'm just taking the bin constants. That's all. I'm fin yeah. averages. So no surprise that these red dots are bang. I might be surprised that was not exactly bang on, but they should be bang on uh, to each one. So we're not really doing anything uh, that interesting here. In fact, right. I, said, I said at first, I was surprised by this. Like, wait a minute, I remember that fitting to a constant is estimating the proportion, which is what we're doing, right? So there's the proportions and the same numbers, right? Yeah, so basically it's a you know, 60% chance. Here's the prediction from the model. Here's the, you know, here's the, 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 the average. So wait, so the prediction just is just taking in like the uncertainty into account a, a little bit. That's why it's the slightly different. Yes, that's right. It is taking yeah. the uncertainty into account, right? So then, just, sorry, can you go back down real, real quick? Um, yeah, I mean, because basically, like the, the 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 top one is almost identical, but then yeah. you, the other two it kind of gets farther and farther away because of the uncertainty or the right. variation. Yeah. What's this spell? What we're we doing here? Oh, I'm just calculating the mean just to do the same thing. Okay. Okay. That's cool. Uh, let's see. And then I did an all this list plot where I took some, you know, <laughs> took smaller bins, right? And then plotted the, the prediction is really a step function, right? Maybe from zero to hundred, I'm saying is this value. From 100 to 200, I'm saying this one I'm predicting. And from 200 further, I'm predicting this value. So I bend the data into smaller things that I use for the fit just to see how bad the step function is. It's actually not terrible. <laughs> yeah. Except for right here, uh, you know. So I don't know. Let's see. What's the prediction accuracy? Fifty-nine percent. Okay. Well, slightly better than it was before, but yeah, still fifty-eight percent of the people switch, though. <laughs> yeah. So just guess guessing that they all switched gives you about the same prediction accuracy. Yeah. <laughs> sounds like we need other predictors <laughs> yeah. in that model. I mean, it sounds like distance in and of itself is probably not a. Yeah. Like edge, you know, like if someone was high, like whatever, like you know, advanced education is in the region, like you know, a dummy indicator for that times distance. I bet that would there would be an interaction. People that maybe have a greater understanding of what's at risk. And what wasn't that in the data? I don't know. Maybe. Yeah, it's in there. I don't know what they mean. Education, education four, but yeah. Oh, education is just education four. I think is just divided by four. Yeah. To scale it down he did that and actually did do the education in the chapter that's it that's all i had to say about that one i don't know if it's valuable that's all i have to say about that <laughs> um, yeah hey um so 
Uh, I was looking at the, the next chapter is is basically account models, you know, like Poisson and negative binomial. Yeah, exactly. Um, I, which I don't know, unless you really die into do it. I mean, I have some background in that. I was going to do it, but I probably would need to split. And if you look at it, it's a freaking beast. It's it's um, they're covering um, Poisson and negative binomial, then the binomial logistic binomial, and then probit models, and then multinomial logit models, and then robust regression. I was gonna say I'll I could do it, but it'd probably take me two weeks if you're if, if um if um you're interested. That'd be great. I mean, I know you just you just did this one, but I mean, if you want to if you want to jump into that, <laughs> yeah, I just think um, you know I just think that like I know more about it. I'd love to hear your take on because I really don't know anything about it. Yeah. So I think what I'm gonna try to I've do. I've done like a, I've done like one one yeah. case for like sales numbers or something. I was about <laughs> well, yeah. And so this is just, it's just all about, you know, it's about counting stuff. Right. Yeah. And so it's, it's just common in like ecology and stuff like that. But actually let me, uh, awesome. let me show you. Um, I mean, I also go back cause I, you know, I blinked last week, but okay. Can you see my um, PDF here? Okay. Yeah. You should be able to see it now. Yep. So, okay. So yeah. So the chapter is, it's, so we're, we're going to cover this Poisson and negative binomials, logistic binomial, and then probe it. Um, yeah. So I kind of, what I want to think I want, I want to do is, um, cover everything up to probe it for next week and then do this the following week. If that makes sense. Is that okay? It I'm putting it in right now. Yeah. And then I'll kick off part four. Yeah. Yep. And that's uh well, it's not not the end, but it's getting closer. Let me see if I did this right. So next week is the 27th, and mm -hmm. then May 4th, then I'll yep, we're good. Yep. And we'll yeah. So let me actually um I already put it in the thing. You put it, okay, put it, yeah, put it in for that. But yeah, no, I think you know whatever i mean it's just it's, it's and also i'm not doing you're doing uh advanced r anyway next week right so i mean am i or you're right yeah <laughs> so yeah i figured that it, 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 i think it would be better just if you know i, I am having trouble <laughs> braiding today well also like i think uh like that's one of the reasons why i, I mean i think i i did last week i did advanced r and then i was supposed to do this too and i was like i just couldn't do it you know it's like too much too much going on so oh no i'm not doing next week i'm colin's doing oh colin's whatever well it's fine and then, then i'm doing quasi quotation after that right because yeah. colin wanted to do expressions for some reason i forget why oh no one was signed up that's why i guess i could have done it mm. do we that's right isn't it we haven't done expressions, right? Have we? Well, we have. We did. I mean, I covered it in like sort of, um, you know, again, like a big picture and big picture. But yeah, I think this week is coming up as expression, isn't it? Or no? Yeah, yeah you're right. According to the schedule. And then I'm going to do quasi quotation. You just, yeah, that's right. And then you're going to do evaluation, I guess. And, but it might take me two weeks to do quasi quotation, to tell you the truth. <laughs> <laughs> might be slowing down on that one, too. <laughs> yeah, no, it's no problem. All right, man. Well, we'll make it. All right, yeah. Hey, thanks a lot. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, yeah, it was it was not our finest work, but we uh, we got through it. And uh, <laughs> yeah, we'll we'll actually get to. Work, I think we get to work on a lot more of the same stuff um, because uh, in the count models, you still end up doing like the you know how how yeah. well you predicted and stuff like that. And so, all right, man. All right, thanks, Ryan. I'll see you next week, or I'll see I'll see you Monday. But I'll see you. Yeah. Bye. All right. Very good.